cute house. I would buy it. Hey everybody, welcome to the Toronto Real Estate Show with Janelle and Leslie. I'm Janelle Cameron. I'm Leslie Pearson. And today we are going to talk about uh, what to do if your investment property is no longer making you money. Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope you had a great week. Um, just, I thought, full disclosure, because we initially thought that we would bring a change of clothes to not make <laughs> it look like we are filming and recording two episodes at one time, but we are. And so uh, these are different episodes. They come out in different Separately, weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but the recording is obviously us wearing the same thing. It wouldn't be... We have in, different clothes. It wouldn't be in any way <laughs> a different recording if we did it another day. No. So... That's right. Um, so, just in case you're wondering why we're... I, have you, you've we're never had a comment about our clothes. You know, I have not had a comment, but you know someone's going to make a comment. Now they that. will. Now they will. Um, yeah, because people do that. So, I wanted to talk a little bit today. Sorry, just grab my coffee here. I saved coffee I was drinking in the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk a little bit today about what to do if you have an investment property and it's no longer making you money because this is happening to a lot of people who bought property in the last couple of years, paid a high amount, had a relatively high mortgage, ended up obviously getting caught in this new cycle of higher interest rates or maybe you know your term is coming due and now all of a sudden your interest rates are gonna be a lot higher and all of a sudden it doesn't work with the rent. What do you do? And I have had, I've got a couple of people in that situation. Do you have anyone like that? No, but I think um, there are thousands of people like that. Yeah. As evidenced by uh, what's happening in the downtown condo market in particular. Yeah. So your client, so people that you know in that situation, mm -hmm. is it a function of interest rate changes yeah. that has caused the problem? Kind of two things. So mm -hmm. I've got one guy in particular, he is, he has a condo town home. He has had, you know, good renters in there, but they've been in there too long. And then what happens when your renters are there too long, you start losing money on the rent mm -hmm. because our fabulous government only allows us to increase at the very minimal amount every year. And so if they are only increasing 2%, 2.5%, you know, the rent's now not keeping up with market value of rent, but the other problem is it's not keeping up with inflation. Mm -hmm. And so interest rates went up, the price of hydro went up, gas went up, water went mm -hmm. up, tenants are paying too low of an amount, taxes went up, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden he's in a situation where he's losing a lot of money every month, and mm -hmm. it can be that dramatic. Mm -hmm. So he has to sell. So that's his solution. That's his solution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, before we go on to what, what do you do, do you know a lot of people, because I do, the landlords I know don't increase rent? Oh, I think a lot of people don't. Well, I, I don't understand that, and I just found that out. Yeah. And I, but I know think, several landlords who don't increase the rent every year. I think a lot of people don't if they, because, yeah, they don't know any better. I, I will put myself in that category. My first property, my first rental property, I had these people in there for a while, and I thought, you know, I don't want to rock the boat. They're, yeah. and they were, They're good they were tenants. Di no, oh. di difficult tenants, oh. but they paid. And I thought to myself, horrible tenants, in fact, horrible, horrible people. <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, I don't want, want to rock the boat and they do pay and I know all the problems I can get in if I don't have someone paying so I'll just keep it the same for a couple of years yeah that, a couple I, of years turned into like five years yeah well it's 11 years later they're still there now I've been raising the rent for now six years but I'm so far behind yeah that the two percent or two and a half percent it goes up every year I'm now I would say twelve hundred dollars less in rent than I should be. Yeah, so I recently found out, like I, we were in a circle and talking about this and almost every one of them said that much the same thing. They yeah. do not. And Mistake, yeah. huge mistake because these people won't leave and then the next thing you know, it's like rent control yeah. where it can't be raised at all. But it, it's, exa it's exactly what it is anyway, two and a half percent. I mean, what the heck? Um, so you must, 
I mean, if you're a landlord, you must start out. Like your starting point is important. Your starting point is important. And unfortunately, there are no landlords in the out there unless you, if you've bought a new condo uh, past 2018, you can raise the rent to whatever you want. But every other building is under this government control regulation how much you can raise it and you will never keep up that's the reality if they stay like my people have done like i've got in this house 11 years upstairs and it's got to be eight years downstairs and you can't do anything about that nothing Nothing. you can only i mean so they must be going month to month yes so you could sell you can sell um you can move in you can move in if you sell, you that's tricky because they will probably be asked to leave by the new yeah. buyers because they won't want them yeah. because of their low rent. Yeah. But but if you do try to sell, you have to know that if your tenants refuse to leave, yeah. not only will it impact the value of the property, but it will also you know dissuade any buyers potentially from buying it because the rent is too low for them to take these tenants on but isn't it true that the buyers would only find out that they refuse to leave after they bought so it's not really your problem as a seller well it can be because if they've asked for vacant possession yeah so if they in the contract say like i will only take possession of the home so so this is a learning for me so if ever I'm in that situation Mm -hmm. um, I would never be able to guarantee vacant possession no that's yeah Mm -hmm. so if you have to cross that out of an offer from a buyer you know that buyer might walk but I feel like you vulnerable Mm -hmm. to the whims of a tenant I can't say for certainty Mm -hmm. they sell say they're gonna leave how do I know if there's a good, if there are good tenants and you can have a conversation with them and explain the situation, so this is exactly what's it's going like on almost online. the most important relationship there is in the world. Yeah, is between real estate agent and tenant. So I'll give you an example of this client I'm telling you about. So his he's gone to his tenants and explained, and I've explained to them, look, you're going to be asked to leave anyway. Yeah. So you, I know this, you know, my client's selling and it's inconvenient. And I'm sorry but there's no chance that you are going to be able to keep this place right tenanted like as tenants when new buyers come because you're just it it's a a uh, single occupant townhome people are going to come in and want to move in for themselves yeah so because of that they they are understanding and they they you know they get it right they know that it's better for them to have the time to look now he's given them lots of time he's like the, the greatest landlord so I think if you, option number one, how we started this topic really, like what do you do? Option number one is selling, but there's got to be, you know, obviously a lot of different factors at play there that, that. And yeah, your best, your best opportunity is to sell without tenants. Without tenants and just try to, you know, maintain a good relationship with them so that they understand yeah. that they're going to be this. And there's been a case. lot of, uh, a lot of it in the media about, um, I think what they, we call cash for keys. Cash like for paying, keys. Paying yeah. tenants to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's something that you may consider having to do. I mean, there are still, things. there was a case of a hundred thousand dollars recently, wasn't there? Yeah, there was, I had clients that their well, their tenants just asked them for 50, I'll leave for 50. Yeah, I had a tenant say the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, you know, there are still good people out there. There are still good tenants, I think. And Mm -hmm. so they will, hopefully you have some of those. (laughs) And if you have to sell, you have to sell. Like, I mean, these are hard times for people. Your expenses as a landlord or a homeowner have probably doubled in the last couple of years. And it's tough, the situation you referred to earlier. So when you have, you have a great relationship with your tenant, they understand they have to leave. But they've been living in your landlord's property at a really reduced, unrealistic rent, and then they get the sticker shock yeah, of going out to find something. Then they maybe become not so nice tenants. That's what happens. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. Yeah. I have someone who would be willing to pay the difference between what they're paying and market value now for three years. Wow. To get them out so yeah. they can sell. 
crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's option number one. So selling is option number one. Yeah. But yeah. Option number two, I think, uh, you know, must come down to just sort of refinancing uh, because there, there are a lot of people right now in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, and I think that um, if you are really in trouble with your mortgage and your tenant is not paying anywhere close to what you need uh, to make the bills, then you've got to consider maybe trying to refinance. Now, there's obviously, we can't speak to that in detail. It's something that you'd need to talk about with your lender or your bank and try to come up with some arrangement. But I have heard of some creative solutions right now that banks and lenders are, tr are offering to try to help people out where they can. This will all depend on things like, you know, whether you're a good client and you have a good credit score and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But they are aware, I think, of, of the situation that we're in and it's a little bit out of our control. You know what I have a lot of, uh, not a lot, but uh, I didn't know this as well. It's funny in your uh, client network or your, even your circle of friends, the things that are going on that you just didn't realize. But I have a lot of maybe friends who are holding mortgages now. Interesting. For people who are in trouble and wow. can't, can't solve it otherwise. Okay. I have a lot of friends holding mortgages now where wow. I don't know if I knew anybody before. Because they can't get a traditional yeah, mortgage. Yeah, exactly. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's... And they're making a killing, my friends. Yeah. And it's solving a problem. Right, and it's solving a problem. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah. What do you do if they default? I, I, I don't know anything about that business, and I don't claim to, but the, there's rules. Yeah, it and does happen. There's, there's things that happen. So one thing you might be thinking... I think thinking, you get the property. <laughs> yeah. One thing you might be thinking is that uh, you can just ask your tenants to leave and have other tenants move in. And of course, we kind of covered that a little bit, how difficult that would be because... You can't. I think a lot of landlords don't realize the rules and how hard it is really to have... There are very limited um, reasons that you can get rid of a tenant. Mm -hmm. And because you're having financial problems is not one. No. Um, Non-payment of rent is one reason you can get rid of them. If it goes to Yeah, that's court tough. That's hard too. That's a hard one. Very hard. Um, but if it's a proven situation and they're not paying and you can get them out, um, you can sometimes file for an eviction based on excessive damage to the property uh, or doing anything illegal in the property. Those are... are yeah. Yeah, it still has to go through the two-year backlog of, yeah. of landlord and tenant board. But I would say those are really kind of the only reasons. A lot of people are trying to say, well, I'll ask my tenants to leave and I will, because I'm going to renovate, because that is a thing. You yeah. can ask your tenants to leave and you can renovate. But I don't think what people realize is the law says that you then have to allow the tenants back in at the same rate. Yeah. So it does you absolutely no good to try to do that because you will end up having them, you're taking a chance, maybe they've found something else and they don't come back, but if they do come back, they're gonna be living in your beautifully renovated place. <laughs> at the same at low the rate. At the same low rate. Yeah. Um, another thing people think is that, well, I'll just move in. It's the most common one I hear. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's fine if you are moving in, mm -hmm. but if you're not actually moving in, then, um, you'll get caught and you need to prove a history of you moving you or your direct family member this is son or daughter or you or your significant other and that's it it's not extended to grandparents parents it's not extended to cousins nieces nephews it has to be only those people and if they move if if you move back in you have to then show that you are number one have had hardship and for there's a reason why you need to move back in and that um you have to prove that you're living there by showing bills payments and all of that kind of stuff as well and on top of that you will still have to go to the landlord and tenant board in order for you to convince them to allow you to move back into the place that you own mm -hmm. so it's not a given but if it's if you are struggling with your place it is an option mm -hmm. and and I think not a bad option yeah and my uh, limited experience with that is that it seemed to me 
that the government isn't really clamping down on that, but tenants are. So tenants, tenants will watch and make sure you're living there. Yeah, mm -hmm. but when you do go to a hearing mm -hmm. and you have to, and this is after you've gone through the, all the channels, it's taken a long time, and you've got to the LTV hearing, and they say, why do you move in? And you, why, why are you moving in? And you give all your explanations of why you need to move in. They will demand that you send them bills, mm -hmm. receipts, mm -hmm. that you have moved in for a period of time. And normally, it's actually up to two years, if you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So at any time during that time, any if you get caught or there's any any issue, then uh, you'll be fined. Mm -hmm. There are fines. The fines themselves are probably worth the risk. They're not that bad. Mm -hmm. So, and I throw that out there as a landlord who's had trouble trouble before, and I think that, you know, I don't want to say, like, I'm on the landlord side because I'm not always, obviously, but there's bad landlords. But um, it's something that you can consider if you do have tenant trouble. It might be worth mm -hmm. going that route. So anything else an investor in trouble could do? There's probably options. We talked about refinancing, but there's probably also options, you know, assuming this is your second property, you have another property, there might be some creative ways to even perhaps uh, take out some equity from your main property to put on your right. um, investment property, which just kind of moving things around, which may help a little bit. Um, another option, if you, if you're struggling, this may not make sense, but if it does and you have an opportunity to create another unit in the place, sometimes that helps. So let's say it's a two-story home and it's a duplex, you know, maybe there's a way to, it, maybe if the basement isn't a, an apartment, you could add one in. Maybe you can transform another, sometimes in, uh, this happens a lot in Durham, people put like a, an extension on the back and make that a little mini apartment. Um, another thing which I thought of that a lot of people don't think about is renting out your garage separately. And so you can get a couple hundred dollars a month for that mm -hmm. in a lot of places, especially if it's a large garage. Um, and that may help, mm -hmm. you know, with your monthly expenses. And another thing is adding coin laundry. And there's no reason <laughs> why you can't do that, but coin laundry can make actually a fair bit of money for a lot of people. And so if you've got a triplex, for example, and they're doing several loads of laundry a week, it can add up to a couple hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a couple of different ways there within the unit itself that mm -hmm. you can start to make a little bit more money. Yeah, even, um, are you finding when you uh, go and see houses that more and more the listing agents are including in the information they have available to people who are looking to buy, information about garden suites? Yeah, like I think a lot of people want to add garden suites so they yeah, so say I mean, it's legal or not legal. Or... Yeah, so you you can now in Toronto, in almost every, you know, freehold property I think would qualify, you can build a separate building in your backyard and have yeah. a, a, at least a unit there. And that's expensive, but yeah. at least it's some... It gives you some... Yeah. yeah. Um, some people I've known over the years have rented out parking spots like they may actually even rent out especially if you're in the city of Toronto and your tenants don't have cars you can rent your driveway or your parking spot and that's another couple of hundred dollars a month so there's sometimes things people don't think about mm -hmm. when they're in the weeds so to speak and then you think okay well let's say rented out my garage or rented out parking and I added coin laundry machines and Maybe you install some, if you're paying for utilities, maybe you install some smart meters, different things like that to try to cut the utilities down. Yeah. You know, there are some things you can do. And it that. definitely speaks to our um, preference for uh, investment properties that have more than one unit. So you're less vulnerable oh, to yeah. these difficult times. Yeah. Um, you know, having a condo downtown, like a one bedroom condo to rent, like, Mm -hmm. Anything happens and you're at risk. Yeah. Uh, if you've got a little bungalow in Hamilton that has both a main floor unit and a basement unit, mm -hmm. you can maybe ride through longer. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can. And hope you know, hope hoping at least one of those yeah. units are turning yeah. over regularly. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important to you know get creative when you're thinking about it. And if all of those things work, then obviously selling, you know, is your best option. But um 
like I understand because I, you know, I had properties that used to make me positive cash flow and all of them right now, they're a struggle. Yeah. You know, the people who aren't paying, I've got people who won't leave, you know. Yeah. It's, it's not, yeah. it's, you know, it's hard times for everybody. Everybody's feeling the pinch, including the tenants. Yeah. So they don't necessarily, you know, they don't have extra money to, to throw around either. So they're, they, they lock in right to wherever mm -hmm. they are and they don't, they know if they move, they're going to have to pay a lot mm -hmm. more. So would our advice also, would you also advise people to only buy post 2018 investment property? Like are, new condos? Yeah, I mean, there is that. That's that's helpful for mm -hmm. sure. That but, would help too. You know, condos are, it's just hard to make yeah, okay. money on a condo yeah. anyway with fees, unless you're paying it, it out, right? But even still, yeah. but it's an option. Yeah. Yeah. But you see these these landlords out there in some areas renting rooms in their, their places. Oh, well, I, have you not walked into some awful situations? Oh, I have. Yeah, so and look, I. some of this, I get like, they're just horrible people try to make money but like in some of these cases I think they're just trying to yeah pay their own bills yeah and they just can't get rid of these places themselves well this is depressing so let's end this yeah. <laughs> all right okay everyone thanks for listening hopefully you aren't depressed um but there's solutions I don't think it's depressing anyway let's uh no I'm just sad, sad that so many people who with the best of intentions and the smartest smarts are are struggling I know it's just the time we're in. It'll all yeah. shake itself out. Yeah. Uh, but don't forget to follow us on all of our social channels at the Chanel Cameron team. And if you could do us a huge favor and rate this podcast, we would really appreciate it. It means a lot and uh, makes a difference to us. So thanks again. Have a great week and happy real estate. Happy real estate, everyone.